The next days were not filled with celebration as they had hoped. Ashheart woke Riverpaw the moment weak sunlight trickled through the waterfall. Together, they and a few tribe cats journeyed quickly back to where they had last seen Ava. Riverpaw's heart twisted as soon as they turned the corner, revealing Ava's battered form collapsed on her side, pelt barely moving. They rushed her back to the cave where Stone Teller waited, poultices all prepared and bundles of cobwebs and sticky leaves already laid out. Tensions remained high while the healer busily rushed between Ava, Stonepaw, Duskfall, and the rest, binding wounds with deft paws and swiftly applying various pastes. He used a few sticks and an abnormally large layer of binding to set Stonepaw's leg. Still, despite how secure the structure seemed, the healer's eyes remained dark. Riverpaw and Echopaw were beside Stonepaw throughout his treatment, within earshot when the healer leaned toward the tom with a soft meow. Your leg will heal, but you must be very careful with it. The bone was not simply broken, so I suggest you stay still for a few weeks. After that, I'll work with you to get it moving right again. Stonepaw's calm blue eyes lit with fear at those words, but the tom still managed a nod of understanding. Echopaw flicked his ear with her tail and tried to smile. Come on, you're the most responsible cat ever. Following orders is what you do best, so... All I have to do is order you to get better. That's not how it works, Echo, Stonepaw murmured, eyes fixed on his leg. Echo Paw lifted her chin defiantly. It works however I say it does. She marched over to Stonepaw's leg, planted her paws firmly, and leaned toward it with a theatrical wiggle of the tail. Heal, leg. You've got to support a future warrior and deputy of ThunderClan. Stonepaw's dim expression lifted for a moment and he chuckled. Riverpaw joined him, feeling her own tension abate at the sight of Echopaw's kiddish attitude. Echopaw smiled and continued chanting at the leg, Heal! Heal! I command you! Riverpaw and Stonepaw shared a laugh, but not a moment later their laughter faded as Echopaw settled, head tilted down and smile vanished. Her golden eyes were dark and watery. Please heal. Stonepaw's mouth twisted as he took in his sister's fragile expression. He swallowed and grinned. You've commanded it, Echo Star. I have to obey the order. Riverpaw expected the playful nickname to lift her friend's spirits, but it seemed the opposite. The she-cat's eyes darkened, and she flattened her ears. Still, it only took a moment for her to smile again. Of course it will. The tortoiseshell she-cat padded back to her spot beside Riverpaw, who tried her best not to stare at her friend. It was clear that Echo Paw was worried, but Riverpaw knew the she-cat had an indomitable spirit. There was no way she would be down for long. And, of course, Stonepaw would make a full recovery. He really was the strongest cat she knew. Drawing her eyes away from her friends, she watched Stone Teller changing the bindings on Rowan Shadow's shoulder. Her eyes drifted to the still form of Duskfall, his clanmate, Moth legs crouched at his side. As worried as she was about Stonepaw's condition, she had to admit the Wind Clan cats had it worse. Duskfall still showed no sign of waking, and it had been two days already. Moth legs wore all of her concern in her slouched form and disheveled fur. Most of the tension was now riding on the Tom's condition. If he did not wake soon, Riverpaw feared the clan and the tribe would carry that sorrow for a long time. Despite his silly cadence and constant flirting, he really had alleviated so much of their stress throughout the journey and planning. On the second day, the cats of the season tree were preparing to leave, and Riverpaw watched as one of them walked quietly over to Moss Legs. The blue-gray tribe cat stood before the Wind Clan warriors and bowed her head. I owe this Tom my life. He jumped in the way when the wolf came toward me. The she cat lifted her eyes, meeting Moss Legs' gaze. The tribe cat faltered. He he didn't seem like the heroic type, constantly flirting, but he saved my life, and he didn't even know me. I will pray to the tribe of endless hunting every night for his full recovery. She dipped her head again, and then joined her tribe mates as they made their way back to their own territory. Moss legs watched them go, an unreadable expression on her face. Having heard the entire exchange, Riverpaw vowed she would do the same. Turning her eyes toward the watery daylight, 
seeping through the entrance. She whispered a prayer to Star Clan, to any of the ancient cats. Help Duskfall wake. However, two more days passed, and the anxiety of the clan cats coated the air even more. Ashheart, Rowan Shadow, Ginger Pelt, and Wolfclaw could be heard discussing when they'd be able to return home. Riverpaw listened from a distance, swiveling her ears. We can't even think of leaving until Duskfall wakes up, right? Ginger Pelt meowed. There is the possibility that he may not wake up, Wolfclaw rumbled. Wolfclaw, Ginger Pelt hissed, glancing toward the two WindClan cats. You can't say that when Moss Lakes has been sitting for days by his side. He will wake up. As much as we all want that to be true, Rowan Shadow began softly. It is important to remember certain facts. If we wait for Duskfall to wake up, it could be a moon or more before he's ready to make the journey back. In fact, the same could be said of Stonepaw. I doubt we want to strain any of our injuries, but his and Duskfall's are particularly severe. The Tom paused a moment. We should consider leaving without them. Ginger Pelt looked at her mate in astonishment, but Ashheart spoke before she had a chance. I understand Rowan Shadow's thinking. If just one of us from each clan went back, we could report to our clans, and then the rest could return together as well. But that means each party will be more vulnerable on their journeys. Wolfclaw's pale yellow eyes narrowed. It's either that, or we don't go home for a moon, and our clans continue to wait without any word. The warriors fell silent, and Riverpaw looked around again. Stonepaw was sitting a tail length away from her, absentmindedly tossing a ball of moss back and forth to Echo Paw. When the ball landed slightly out of reach, the Tom stared at it, a withdrawn expression in his eyes. River, the Tom said suddenly, were you going to tell Echo Paw and me something? Echo Paw looked at the she cat as well, and River Paw remembered her promise with a jolt. Yes, I was. Her words came out hesitantly, a feeling of nervous anxiety pricking her paws. She scooted closer to her friends and lowered her voice. I owe you an explanation for why I've been acting so strangely. Although, it's hard. The she-cat took a breath. When she had said before that she would tell them everything, she meant it. She planned on holding nothing back, and now was as good a time as any. With one last glance to make sure no other cat was in earshot, the she-cat opened her mouth. It took a moment for any words to come out. I held back all those moons ago when I told you about my past. Her friend's eyes were fixed on her, and Riverpaw's hesitation began to melt. Suddenly, she realized that no matter what she told them, these two cats would never leave her. They were her friends, in every sense. They were the two she could journey anywhere with, do anything beside. It was about time she was honest with them. Taking a breath, the she-cat began with the night of her graduation, the night of her sister's death. It took a week for their injuries to heal. On the third day, Ava woke up, and by the next morning, she had disappeared. Riverpaw found herself staring at the she-cat's empty bed, wondering exactly what the cat was going to do. Where could Ava go when she had no pack? No clan. No tribe. But there was no point in worrying. Riverpaw could not leave her friend's side to look for the she-cat. Perhaps their paths would cross again. Stonekit's leg remained bound and still, the tom only moving when he absolutely had to or simply couldn't stand sitting around anymore. After telling her friends all that she had been hiding, Riverpaw felt yet another weight lift from her shoulders. Stonepaw and Echopaw had reacted exactly as she knew they would, with understanding and acceptance. Not once since then had they looked at her differently, and their bond had not weakened in the slightest. Reassured of her friends' support, Riverpaw resolved to help them with their troubles at any cost. Duskfall remained asleep, his pelt rising and falling steadily, 
but giving no indication that he would wait. With gentle words, Rowan Shadow, Ginger Pelt, and Ashheart talked to Moss Legs about leaving, and the Wind Clan she cat nodded numbly. I know. We have to send word to our clans. And it's best it comes from one of their own warriors. I'll be ready to leave tomorrow. Her eyes suddenly lit with a green fire as she added, But I will be returning. I cannot allow my clanmate to wait here alone. Not if I can bring him help and get him back to Wind Clan safely. No cat argued. It was generally agreed that they would all return as soon as they had reported the situation to their clans. After all, each cat was leaving someone behind. Ashheart padded over to the three Thunder Clan apprentices, his tail twitching with indecision. Our situation is slightly more complicated than the others. You two were never meant to come. Echo Paw and Stone Paw flattened their ears. Ashheart sighed and continued. But, obviously, I can't send you back, Echo Paw. I imagine you want to stay beside your brother. The she cat nodded once with unmistakable conviction. Ashheart nodded in return. Then Riverpaw and I will be going back. Stonepaw's eyes widened. You're leaving us? But we're both apprentices. The speckled warrior looked at the tom with cool amber eyes. To be frank, you were close to your warrior ceremony before this whole fiasco started. And the two of you have earned my trust during this journey. I have seen you act with bravery, and I have seen you act with intelligence. Don't think I didn't hear you giving Riverpaw advice, even though she ignored most of it. Ashheart gave Riverpaw a pointed glance, and the she-cat scratched the ground with a claw, ashamed. Her mentor concluded with a sweep of his tail. My apprentice will remain by my side until we reach ThunderClan. From there... I will make sure help is sent back, perhaps in the form of your mentors. At this, Echo Paw and Stone Paw shared nervous looks, but none of the cats could object. Riverpaw swallowed her discontent with this plan. She would have preferred to come back herself to retrieve her friends, but she figured she had pushed the limit with her mentor enough. She would be obedient. He deserved her cooperation.